Good morning. Welcome to worship with us here at First Congregational United Church of Christ in Elkhorn. It is good to be together both in person this morning and good to be together uh, virtually if you are joining us online. We're glad that you're joining. Uh, the flowers on the altar this morning are given in memory of Richard Lyle, so we appreciate the, the beautiful flowers this morning. I want to thank uh, Barb Townsend and Cindy Waller for the rainbow on the altar this morning. Um, ironically, I feel a little responsible for the weather today because it is Noah's Ark uh, scripture reading in the narrative lectionary. Um, but as I said earlier, the flood is supposed to be over by now because we have the rainbow here already. So uh, thank you to Cindy and Barb for, for uh, humoring me and, and creating this, this rainbow. Uh, this morning. A couple of new things um, happening. If you open your bulletin, you will see that you have an insert that is called Sharing God's Story at Home. Uh, this is going to be a regular for the next uh, several weeks. Uh, this goes along with the narrative lectionary from which I preach. Uh, there are things to do at home, uh, mealtime prayer, uh, service options, and daily Bible readings. So we hope that you will take this with you, uh, keep it near you, and take a look at it during the week. There are devotions uh, for during the week. So again, based on the same scripture readings you'll hear in church on Sunday, please keep this in a place where you can look at it um, at home during the week. Uh, also today, we begin our WISE study. Um, you should have that insert in your bulletin as well. Um, this is something that the conference, the United Church of Christ, uh, Wisconsin Conference, is encouraging us to study in the next year um, as they will be voting on a wise resolution at our annual meeting next June. So we are beginning our study today and we will meet in the upper classroom meeting room uh, in the other part of the building um, following uh, Sunday Sunday. There are ice cream Sundays uh, today. Uh, after worship, and also cookies and coffee. So if you're not an ice cream person, is there anybody here who's not an ice cream person? Okay, no, I'm not, but uh, also coffee and cookies. So please plan to stay for some fellowship time, and then we'll move into the meeting room for the WISE study this morning. And I think that is all the notes that Cindy left me. So let us uh, enjoy and in praise, worship our God. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. When everything is going exactly according to plan, God, God is, is with, with us. us. When nothing is going to plan and we no longer know how to adapt, God is with us. When we walk humbly and when we have lost sight, of the truth about ourselves. God has committed his covenant with the earth and all its creatures. When we hold too tightly to the wrong things and when we learn to move where the spirit leads. God has committed the covenant with the earth and all its creatures. In success and failure and all the messy in between. Now please join me in the opening prayer. You long in relationship with us, O oh God. You call us to walk with you, and you choose to empower human beings to carry out your work in the world. We do not understand why you would choose us, or what reason you might have for calling us to be your partners in love. Others 
you are comfortably able, please stand as we sing together. The first reading this morning comes to us from the sixth chapter of Genesis, verses 5 to 22. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. These are the descendants of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw that the earth was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits, its width, 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. 
Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and put the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. For my part, I am going to bring a flood of waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you. And you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing, of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind, two of every kind shall come into you to keep them alive. Also take with you every kind of food that is eaten and store it up, and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. I continue the readings in Genesis in chapters 8 and in chapters 9. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him and to the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. 
Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God remains forever. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations in our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. And if there are children in the back where I can't see, it is time to go to Sunday school. Have you, have you ever thrown yourself wholeheartedly into something only to discover things were not going exactly as planned? A home improvement project, maybe? A church improvement project, perhaps? You throw yourself into it, this is going to be a piece of cake, right? But then things just don't quite go as planned. Maybe you took a new job or moved to a new area only to discover it really wasn't what you had anticipated, what you thought it would be. Have you ever ambitiously taken on a project and then regretted doing so? If you have, you're in very good company because that's where we find God this morning. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry he had made humankind. Wow. God just finished creating humankind in chapter 2 and now in chapter 6, God has serious regrets already. God is ready to hit the delete button to wipe the slate clean and start over. What do you think of that? A God with regrets. God was sorry he had ever made humankind. A God with regrets. God sees the evil and the corruption and the violence on the earth and thinks, this is not what I had planned. This did not go as planned. So God plans a reversal of creation. In Genesis 1, we read that earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. Before God created, there was only void, darkness, chaos, all symbolized by the face of the deep, water. The ancient writers believed that they lived surrounded on all sides by the waters of chaos. And at creation, God restrained chaos, pushed it back, and created order. In Genesis 7, when God releases the flood, we hear that all the foundations of the great deep burst forth. 
Thus, this flood destroys the order that God had created and returns the earth to a pre-creation state, a state of chaos. The waters of chaos flood back in on the earth. Now, the story of a great flood is a common story that shows up in many ancient cultures. Some speculate that maybe there was actually a flood of this magnitude because the story shows up in most ancient cultures, just like most ancient cultures had a creation story. And if you read this entire story in the book of Genesis, you'll likely be able to see that our story of Noah and the flood is actually two stories, two writers, whose stories have been woven together. This particular flood story in Genesis has become a common, beloved children's story, right? How many church nurseries are decorated with Noah's Ark? And you can see why it is such a popular children's story. Once upon a time, God saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and God was sorry he had ever made human beings. And God said, I have determined to make an end to all flesh. Now I'm going to destroy all humanity with all the earth, and everything's going to die. It's a lovely bedtime story, really. A lovely children's story. God regretted creating humanity because the earth was filled with violence because of them. Now, Adam and Eve get kicked out of the garden early on, and by chapter 4, Cain murders his brother Abel. I mean, it's really not a great start, folks. So by chapter 6, God regrets making humanity and plans to destroy humanity and all the creatures on the earth. What do you think of this image of a destructive God? Now, before we're too hard on God, let's read the text again. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. The Common English Bible says, and he was heartbroken. What do you think of that image of God? A heartbroken broken God because of the way his creation turned out. A heartbroken God. God had such great plans for creation, but it didn't take long before evil and corruption and violence took over. And that broke God's heart. So God planned a great do-over. Do-over. Have you ever wanted a do-over? Another chance? When I was a kid, do-overs were really popular when we were playing our neighborhood games. Anybody else? If you didn't like the way something went, you said, do-over. Right? Come on. Anybody else? Do-over. We were playing cornhole last week, and my husband threw one, not realizing that like I had won or was going to win if he landed or something. And he goes, wait a minute, can I have a do-over? And I'm like, he, however, had given me the, the ultimate do-over many years before when we moved, we built our house and it was construction white on the walls and shortly after that we started painting and I said, let's do the front two rooms light blue. So we went and we picked out the paint and Bob painted both of the front two rooms, the vaulted area and the entryway and I stood there a day later and I looked at it and I said, there's too much lavender in that. We need to do it over. So we went and bought new paint. And guess what? He repainted both rooms. And I got my do-over. God is in the market for a major do-over. Now, God hasn't totally given up on humanity. In the midst of this plan to destroy the earth, there's a glimmer of hope. And his name is Noah. Noah is righteous in God's eyes. Noah walks in God's ways. Noah and his wife and three sons and their wives are now tasked with building an ark. They will be the start of this new creation. Even 
as God plans destruction, God sets plans for a future. Even as God plans destruction, God sets plans for a future. In the midst of God's heartbreak, there is hope. What breaks God's heart today? What breaks God's heart today? Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. The earth was filled with violence. Apparently some things don't change. Corruption, evil, violence. When you are bombarded with news from multiple sources on every device you own, or you just simply start to look through the news articles for the city of Milwaukee or the city of Chicago, it might be easy to concur that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. Violence. Constant, senseless violence. Corruption. Some things apparently don't change. So it's a good thing God did. It's a good thing God changed. Noah built the ark and piled everybody on board. The flood came, wiping out everyone and everything on earth. If you read chapter 7, you can get a sense of the timing. Close to a year, all told. We think of the 40 days. That was just how long it rained. Close to a year, they're all on this ark. And when the flood waters had abated and the land was visible again, God said to Noah and his family, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant. God hangs up his bow. God moves away from destruction. God changes how he chooses to deal with humanity in the future. God makes a covenant, a promise. This is the first mention of covenant in the Bible, but it is not the last. The rainbow is the sign of this promise, a sign to remind God of the everlasting covenant he has made with all of creation. God has seen what human beings are capable of. And in spite of that, God promises this time to stick with them. God has entered into a new kind of relationship with humanity. No doubt humanity will continue to test God's patience. Humanity will continue to test God's patience. On my way in on Sunday mornings, I listen to Mass at the church where my son is the music director, and they broadcast their 8.30 Mass, so I listen to Mass. And today, the readings for the Catholic Church in their lectionary included Exodus, where the people build a golden calf. And I started laughing because right then and there, God is ready to give up on humanity again, and Moses reminds God of the covenant, the promise. Humanity will continue to test God's patience. This great do-over didn't change human nature. But God changed. Like a parent committed to their child, even when the child's behavior, behavior pushes the limits, God has made a commitment to this relationship with Noah and all of his descendants, including us, including all of creation, and the rainbow. The rainbow is a sign of that promise, a sign of God's covenant. The rainbow 
is the sign of the covenant, the promise. God has promised never to destroy the earth with a mighty flood again. Do you like how God sort of has this out? Like, I'm not going to flood the earth. What? No. God makes a covenant with the people. And we will see how God continues to covenant with humanity. God isn't giving up on us so easily now. And that is good news for us. It is not permission to become complacent and just do whatever we want. Rather, as the bow is a reminder to God that he has put down destruction and promised unwavering presence, let the bow be a reminder to us to put down violence and corruption that is so prevalent in this nation, in this world, let us move away from the ways our neglect and our self-centeredness continue to destroy God's creation. And as God has made a commitment to us, let us make a commitment to God to try to make this world into the world that God intended in the first place. Let us shift our vision to be in line with God's vision for creation, for humanity, for the earth. And let's commit to living and loving in ways that change this world, that bring it in line with God's vision and God's intent. When we see the bow in the sky, let us remember God's commitment and let us recommit ourselves to God's way. Amen. When the great COVID hit, things stopped. Worship in person stopped, and slowly over time we got back to that, but there were changes, and there were some changes that have continued to be a part of our worship, one of those is that we are no longer passing the offering plates. And this church is blessed to have remained financially stable during all of this time. Uh, we now offer the offering plates in the back. Um, we have our PayPal tab. And so um, we do still have ways to give, but we have not had that moment of offering during the worship service. And so what I have chosen to do now is to put back into the service a moment of gratitude, even though we are not passing offering plates. Uh, we will take a time, a moment, to remember and to be thankful for the good things in our lives, for the ways that God is acting in our lives and in our world. And so I want you to just take a moment this morning to think about the ways that your life feels blessed, to give thanks to God for some small or big thing in your life right now. Just take a moment of silence today and think about that for which you are grateful. God, for all of the ways our lives feel blessed, for all of the ways we see you at work in our lives and in this world, we give you thanks and praise. And let us sing our response of praise.
giving thanks for the blessings in our lives, for the good things. We also come to this time of prayer bringing concerns and challenges, disappointments and hurts that are a part of our lives. We come bringing the prayers of our own hearts, bringing prayers for others, for those close to us, for our communities, for our nation, and for our world. We come trusting in God's unwavering presence with us, trusting in the power and the possibility and the hope of our God. So let us come to God in a time of prayer. God of all creation, we come before you now giving thanks for each new day before us, giving thanks for the new opportunities you place before us, for second chances. God, we give you thanks most of all for your unwavering presence, your commitment to love us unconditionally. As we come together in this time and this place, we bring the prayers of our hearts. We come on this particular day, remembering those who were affected on September 11th so many years ago, remembering the ways that so many individual lives and our nation were changed forever remembering the violence and the terror. And God, we pray for continued healing, not only in the lives of those most directly impacted, but continued healing for our nation and for our world. We pray, O oh God, for an end to the violence and the evil and the hatred that is still so much a part of this world you have given us, this world you have created. We pray, O oh God, for a change of heart, a heart that is filled only with your love and your grace. We pray, O oh God, for the hope that you give us, in the midst of death and destruction, in the midst of pain and evil, in the midst of hurt in our individual lives and brokenness, God, help us to hold on to your hope. Help us to know that you are there leading us forward in each new day, surrounding us with healing love, and grace and encouragement to move forward in our individual lives and as a world. God, continue to bless us with your love and help us to find ways to bless others with your love. We pray in the name of the one who showed us that love. Jesus, your Son. Amen. If you are comfortably able, would you stand as we sing together, God of the Sparrow, God of the Whale.
Thank you to all joining us in person and online for worship today. If you miss any of our earlier worship services, they are available on our YouTube channel. You can find a link to our channel along with other information about our church by going to our website, elkhornucc.org. Following worship today, the Sunday school teachers will be hosting Sunday Sunday to welcome everyone back to worship and start of Sunday school. Join us in making your own ice cream sundae. Thank you to Barb Townsend and Sunday school teachers for providing this treat. Script card orders are due today. You may give your completed order with payment to Diane Reese or Cindy Waller. Women's Fellowship will be selling rod and knives for a fundraiser for the next three Sundays. There will be a table display in the family room where you may purchase this fine cutlery. And as always, please consider supporting the ministries of our congregation with your financial gifts. There are offering plates in the back of the sanctuary and as well as our PayPal tab on our church website. We appreciate all of your gifts. Thanks again for sharing in our worship service. Go forth now to look for a rainbow. Go forth to remember God's commitment to you. Go forth to commit yourself to God's way in this world, knowing that God's unwavering presence is with you, that you are surrounded by that unconditional love of our God, by the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit. And may you know God's peace. Amen.